Interestingly, a study recently published by GOE D Omega 3, the trade association for EPA and DHA officials, found that in many countries, including China, the US, and the UK, that the um, intake of omega-3 from fish oils is in fact lower than the recommended daily intake. And even though fresh fish is a well-known source of omega-3, because of these lower intake levels, consumers are looking outside of fresh fish to other sources in which to gain their omega-3. Omega-3 in the package format, which includes um, packaged food, supplements, as well as beverages, was worth 30 billion US dollars in 2012. Supplements, perhaps the most well-known source of omega-3 was only worth 3 billion US dollars in 2012, with packaged food and beverages comprising of the remaining 27 billion. In fact, it's milk formula which is really driving this. Omega-3 fortified functional milk formula was worth 24 billion US dollars in 2012. The demand for omega-3 within the diet is high because omega-3 has a role in maintaining cell fluidity and therefore is essential in prime positioning such as heart health, vision health and brain health. In fact, for all three of these health positionings, Omega-3 gained an Article 13.1 health claim, and these are the most stringent across the world, and therefore this really highlights the credible scientific evidence behind the health benefits for Omega-3. Even though the majority of innovation within Omega-3 has been based around developing more sustainable sources, we have seen some innovation within food and drink itself. If we take food, for example, we've noticed omega-3 being introduced into meat products through encapsulation techniques. So in Venezuela, DHA was introduced into ham. And in Germany, more recently, earlier this year, um, we saw omega-3 introduced into private label sausage and other meat products as well. In terms of beverages, what we notice is that really it's most of the innovation still comes from plant sources. We see the launches of chia-based drinks. But we are seeing, again, through encapsulation techniques improving, the introduction of DHA omega-3 into beverages, and in particular fruit juices. And here, through the developments in technology, consumers are no longer complaining about the fishy aftertaste. The impressive market for milk formula is really testament to the fact that strong innovation has occurred in this category. But it's not only um, children that, where omega-3 manufacturers, manufacturers should focus in terms of product development. There is also the aging population. The population aged over 65 reached 500, over 570 million in 2012, and as it's well, and it's well known that this population is undercatered for, and therefore there is huge opportunity, particularly in the three prime positionings I mentioned earlier: brain health, eye health, and heart health, for um, products fortified with omega-3. For the aging population, it's important to look at those health positionings which are backed by strong scientific evidence, as here consumers really want to trust, really need to trust the efficacy of the product, and the efficacy needs to be realized within a few weeks. Um, and this is in particular why heart health has been much more successful in terms of functional food and drink sales in comparison to vision health or brain health. Leading brands such as um, Unilever's Flora Active or um, Benacol, for example, have added plant sterols into their product and consumers have been able to realize the benefits within a couple of weeks and therefore they gain trust in the positioning as a whole. And so if omega-3 manufacturers are looking to the likes of vision health or brain health, for example, they should try and ensure that the claims they put on their product are ones in which offer a tangible benefit to the consumer. And so really what we can see here is that omega-3 has been successful um, within ch children's health, but also there is potential to target the aging demographic, and therefore omega-3 really is a lifelong friend.